Today on Ballistic Barbecue, I'm going to be sharing with you my copycat version of a famous hot dog out of Cheshire, Connecticut, Blackie's Hot Dog. Let's get going. So Blackie's opened up in 1925 in Cheshire, Connecticut by R. and Mary Blackman, initially as a gas station, but they began serving hot dogs and hamburgers. By 1928, they realized, screw the gas, we're making a lot of money on these hot dogs and hamburgers. So they went all out, hot dogs and hamburgers, very, very small menu. And to this day, it's extremely small with just hot dogs, hamburger, hamburgers, shake not a whole lot going on on the menu which is not a bad thing but the thing it makes blackies very unique is this hot pepper relish that they make and also the way that they're cooking these hot dogs i think is uh, pretty unique and they sell their famous very secret hot pepper relish online i ordered two jars of this it was like eight dollars a jar not including shipping and uh, handling. And half of this jar is gone now, and it's for me trying this, tasting it, smelling it, looking at it, trying to come up with a good copycat of this recipe. And I think I did just that. I'm very, very proud of what I ended up with. And I'll show you what this looks like after I show you the recipe, and I'll show you what mine looks like. But my goal was because, again, they say a few of the ingredients on this uh, back here, but as usual, you know, there's a lot of general, general verbiage going on. Um, I tried to match the texture, the color, the, the flavor, and the heat level. And I think I did it. I, I mean, I'm very, very happy with what I came up with. I'm gonna call it a facsimile. So we're gonna kick it off with two cups of white vinegar, One cup green bell pepper, and this has been diced, about a quarter inch dicing here. One cup red bell pepper. Those are mainly the texture components of this, of this relish here. One third cup diced chili manzano. Manzano means apple in Spanish, and here's what it looks like. You can see it looks like an apple, a little apple. This pepper is a little sweet, and it's got some heat, I mean a nice, pleasant amount of heat that will kind of burn your tongue a little bit. And it's very juicy. This is a good chili. If you don't have these where you live, if you can't find these, again, what you're looking for is a kind of a sweet heat kind of a chili. And I'm dealing with the chilies I have available. I don't know what they're using in Connecticut. Here's most of my heat's coming from this. This is a diced Serrano chili. And I did leave the seeds in this. And also on the green bell pepper, I left the seeds in there. One quarter cup of very finely minced onion. Now I'm going with one teaspoon ground allspice, one teaspoon cinnamon, one teaspoon cumin, one teaspoon ground nutmeg, one teaspoon white sugar, and a half a teaspoon salt. This is gonna be the kind of spice component, which it's, it's a really unique tasting relish. What I did now is I, got, I brought this up to a boil on the stove, again, when I made it last night, I'm not, making another batch here. I'm showing you how I made it. I brought it up to a boil. Once it came up to a boil, I brought it down to a simmer. And then I added about an eighth of a teaspoon of xanthan gum, which is on their recipe list. And xanthan gum is a, it's a natural thickener. Like cornstarch would probably work, but the xanthan gum, a little goes a long way. So I get about an eighth of a teaspoon in there and stir it in really fast. Then what I did was I simmered it, like at a high simmer, stirring it pretty often. And then once I saw it starting to reduce, I would add two cups of water. And I just kept doing that for about four hours. And then I finally reduced it to the same texture where they're, you know, that they're showing me here in this jar. And I'll show you what I ended up with. So obviously this is theirs in the jar. This is mine in this bowl here. Color's pretty spot on. Um, mine is a lot fresher than theirs is right now. So. I'm guessing that if this was in a jar, it would probably darken up just a little bit more. Again, I am not claiming this is an exact duplicate of their recipe, but I am standing firm in that I did a really, really good job of, of capturing the look, the texture, the smell, and the flavor of theirs. 
So this is a really, really freaking good copycat recipe. And I'm very proud of this. I worked all last night on this stupid recipe. Anyway, let's prep those dogs and we'll get the cooking. Blackies is using a meat company out of New Britain, Connecticut to make their hot dogs called Martin Rossell's. And it's a blend of pork and beef. I am using what I have available here. These are really high quality hot dogs. This is by Dietz and Watson, pork and beef, natural casing. There's also our uh, natural casings. So first thing I'm gonna do is just separate the dogs here. Then what they do is they put, they put three cuts on the dogs. Let's cook. So I have a tray of hot oil here. The first hot dogs I'm gonna cook for, first are going to be well done. So I'm gonna get those in here first. And they sink right down to the bottom. We'll know they're ready when they actually float up to the surface, but we're gonna let them go a little bit longer to where they start kind of splitting open. Now on this side, the burners are not on, but it's nice and warm here, and I'm gonna use that to keep the buns warm. And at Blackies, they have a big warming table that's 94 years old. They keep the buns warm on. All right, these are looking good. So they're gonna go onto the flat top now. And they're using a fork in their cooking, so I'm using one here. Those other two that are gonna be just normal, the regular way, I guess. These are looking good. And here we are, we have the two well done and the two served regular. So on all the hot dogs, I'm gonna lay down some spicy brown mustard. So the lead dog here, some of my homemade Blackies, hot pepper relish. Next dog, we're gonna use Blackies actual stuff they're selling. This next regular dog, mine. And theirs. You have to admit, <laughs> I came pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. So this is theirs, this is mine. Pretty close. Let's give this a try. Going with mine first. I'm so proud of this recipe. I really, I worked hard at this one. Hmm. It's got a really nice tang. Just your mouth is going crazy with all the different spices. A little bit on the sweet and then all of a sudden it starts biting at your tongue with the heat. But it's not like a heat that's destroying your palate. And here's theirs. It's really good. So the sauce having sat now for, I don't know, probably 12 hours or so, I think the only modification I would do is add probably a half a teaspoon more of, of the cumin. So they're a regular dog, as far as it's not, you know, well done. So good. And there's. I think um, I like the little bit of extra 
you know, charring, I guess, cooking to the dog, it makes the skin better. But I do also, I mean, it's a, like a juicier hot dog the regular way. Of all the dogs in my series, I'm really, really digging on this one. Um, I mean, me personally, you know, I like, I like spice. This is a little too spicy for my wife. I try, had her try it last night and it was just, uh, she thought it tasted really good, but um, she doesn't handle heat very well. And it's not, like I said, it's not crazy hot. I, I think it's actually a fairly mild heat, but it, it bites your tongue and it burns a bit, then it just kind of goes away very quickly. Mm. It goes really good with that spicy mustard too. Not this week, but eventually I will be doing one of their hamburgers that does include the sauce as well. But wow, this was a success. Uh, I, I think it was, I'm very, very happy with this. Um, again, use the peppers you have available, but just try to match the levels of heat and the, the, the look and texture, I guess. But overall, I think I came very, very close with my goal of, of copying their sauce. And again, I'm not saying it's an exact copy, but it, it's very, very close to the same textures, the same flavors, the same smells, everything about it. So I'm happy. Anyway, uh, keep the suggestions coming in. Um, I'm really enjoying this. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing, hitting the, the bell and thumb it up if you like it. And I will see you on the next video. Cheers.